Hey guys, this is Richard with Riker Mod. Today, what we're going to do is we are going to um, go through the steps of replacing a sway bar. Uh, what we're going to do is replace the factory sway bar with a Riker Mod N900 stainless sway bar. It's a race quality sway bar uh, that uh, we're getting a lot of great feedback on. We've tested, we've tested against other manufacturers and uh, it's a far superior product. So uh, what we're going to do is step-by-step step go through taking the uh, front fascia off, uh, which is pretty easy. I know there's a lot of questions on how to release these two corners. When you take the fascia off, I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to take the, uh, the uh, hood off. However, we'll go through that too. Uh, so this is a segmented video. Uh, once we uh, get down to the sway bar, the, the following this instruction video, you should be able to do this in about an hour, hour and a half start to finish. All right, let's get started. Hey guys, the first thing that we're going to do in this video is we're obviously going to remove the hood. I know that most people know how to do this, but just to make sure it's covered, and we're going to remove the hood. What we're going to do is there's a finger latch under the left and right side of the hood. You pull up on it, pull it forward, and then you just simply take the hood off. What I do is I take and store this. Uh, I don't lay it on the concrete or anything of that nature. I don't want to get the edges all beat up. So what I do is I put a shop towel out and I put it on shop, top of the shop towel uh, for safekeeping. Now on step two. Okay, guys, now we're going to go ahead and work on removing the fascia. Uh, this, uh, it's not too difficult. The only thing that you'll notice that I do here is that I cover up my body panel here and my body panel here. So that way, when I remove this, this clip area will actually want to buck up and, and, and slide against this body panel. Last thing you want to do with a nice new bike or a, a bike that you care for is to scuff it up. Uh, so what I do is I use this uh, Gorilla brand duct tape uh, and I cover up these areas. I do it here, I do it on this side, and I do it on this side. The reason why I use this brand tape is because it doesn't leave residue. Now there is one thing, you don't want to leave this on here for you know days at a time. You, what you want to do is get it on, do your work, take it off. Uh, so let's get started on removing the fascia. One thing that I will say is when I remove these, I do not remove these when it's really cold. And the reason why is there's a clip here and here that fits into this body panel that holds it. If it's too cold, you take a chance on breaking this clip. Um, and once it's broken, this whole fascia has to be replaced. Uh, so, um, I usually make sure it's eh, 50 degrees, maybe a little warmer, um, um, but definitely not when it's cold and the plastic is brittle. Uh, so let's get started. What we're going to do is I use a small impact. You can use a wrench, but it takes a T30 bit to remove two screws down underneath the fascia here and there. Uh, it's pretty simple. Don't need to relocate the uh, the camera for that, the only two that's down here. I'll take the screw out, I set it on the ramp, make sure it's in safe keeping. Do the same thing here on this side. Okay, this bike actually has a, has a engine guard on it that we make, uh, which I would suggest you take a look at. It's got a rectifier cooling fan and it's also got a uh, 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 VCC um stone guard on on this side to, uh, to protect this the uh the control box on this side now that we're here uh there's a boss here and a boss here that has to be disengaged so really all you have to do is just grab the bottom end of the fascia disengage those two clips or those two bosses and you'll notice this will this will come up and rest once you do that, then what you're going to want to do is disengage this, this um, clip over here. Get my fingers in there. There we are. 
and you'll see the reason why I keep that tape in there on there is so when I rest on this side, it doesn't scratch my body panel. And then I'll take this side here, disengage this side, pull it out, and now the face is off. Very easy. All right, now on to step three. Okay, guys, now on to what uh, most people consider the most intimidating part of this job is just to get the radiator out of the way. It's really not as difficult as most people really make it out to be. It's just two bolts and bosses and cradles down here. There's two rubber grommets that, that retain the bottom side of this radiator. It's really very simple. The only thing that uh, you need to look at is, is when you pull the radiator up, You'll notice this hose here sits in a cradle here and the same thing over here. Um, when you pull it up, just make sure that those disengage and it, it'll come up and it'll rest pretty easy. So let's go ahead and do that. What this is, this is a 10 millimeter hex. Um, again, I use my impact. Uh, you can use a wrench here, but I just remove these. Now there's a washer that comes off with that bolt. I set it over to the side, do the same thing here. Set them over to the side, make sure that they're safe, don't get lost. And then what I do is I'll take the radiator and pull it out. You notice how I use my thumbs to, to leverage the radiator out, and then I lift it out of the bosses on the bottom. Once I do that, I just get the radiator hose here, in here, up and out of those cradles, and then I lift it up and then down here underneath there is, you can see it right there. There's a wire that uh, it's a, uh, that's for the fan. I simply unplug it, tuck it up and out of the way and it will rest on the fan just like that. The fan housing is back here and it's not going to damage your radiator at all. Don't lean against it, don't lay tools on it or anything of that nature. And it's good just to sit right there. All right, now we're on to the next step. Okay guys, what we're going to do next is we're going to prep to cut the sway bar. Uh, the reason why we choose to cut the sway bar is in order to get the sway bar out, uh, a bent sway bar configuration is uh, either you have to drop the control arm or to and take the wheel off so um so we think it's better just to go ahead and cut this sway bar and the reason why is because you're never going to use this sway bar um once you take it out it'll go in the garbage or it'll sit in your garage forever so uh what we're going to do now is we're going to get this brake line out of the way um, and then we're going to take the, uh, the end link loose here. Uh, you'll see that I've already taken the liberty of loosening that up. So what we're going to do is just simply taking this out. You'll notice we actually have super billet, uh, end links on here. Uh, if you haven't seen or heard of those, that product, uh, by, uh, Riker Mod by us, uh, take a look because they are quite superior to anything else that you'll see on the on the uh, 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 offered by any any other manufacturer. So, um, moving forward, what we're also going to want to do is this brake line here. I want to relocate it and get it out of the way. So basically, what I do is I take this out of this cradle, so it just pops out. <laughs> like so and you'll notice it gives me plenty of slack here what I will then do is take my good old trusty duct tape and I'll get that up and just move it out of the way what that will then do is that will give me access to take these bolts out, you don't have to relocate this to take these bolts out, but what I'm going to do is take these bolts out of this side and on the far side, 
on the other side <coughs> so I can push the sway bar over and, uh, and cut it off. So uh, you, another little trick of the trade here is what I do is I'll take a 10 millimeter wrench and I'll take an Allen Co magnet and I will duct tape it to the wrench. The reason why I do this is because when I put this wrench in behind the chassis here to get to the nut on the back side of these bolts, it will hold the nut when I take it out. Now, not only that, you'll also notice that uh, you'll see some orange down in here. That's a shop rag. What I do is I stuff shop rags down here to where if I, the, I do lose that nut on the backside, it will funnel through and drop down on the ground here. So uh, it creates a little channel uh, to where it'll just simply drop out. So now that I've got that on the backside, <coughs> I simply take that out. And you'll see that the nut comes out with the wrench. Okay. And then I will take that bolt out. Well, let's go ahead and get the bottom one done. All right, sorry I had to cut away there just for a second, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna now take the nut off the back side of this bolt. So what I do here is I just come in from the back side here. You can feel it, put the wrench on it, and then just back it out. And you'll notice that the nut comes out with the wrench. So we got that. Now we just push the bolts out pop those out sorry about that and that one there and you'll notice once you have these two bolts out this sway bar is actually pretty mobile then what you'll do is you'll just take this bushing here crack it um what i mean by crack it is just open it up and it'll slide right out once you've done that and then did the same operation on, on the other side of the sway bar, which should take you probably about another 15 minutes, uh, 20 tops. I know it's pretty easy once you've done a couple, uh, but now we have the sway bar to where, you know, it can, it can be moved around pretty easy. <clears throat> what I would suggest you do is you'll see right here where the lateral stops are, uh, they're pretty cheesy, but they're there. Uh, not only that, these things are compressed so far. You'll see how thin that sway bar is there that it really does not do any good service to the integrity of the sway bar. It makes it really weak right there. So um, now that you've got the bushing out, uh, let's go ahead and prep it to cut this sway bar. All right, so on to the next step. All right, we've actually progressed uh, and went ahead and cut the sway bar. We didn't think it was any advantage or, or any shared knowledge uh, to show you cutting the sway bar. It's just noisy. Uh, it takes all of about two or three minutes, um, but I'm gonna show you the tool that we used. And basically what we use is a die grinder. <clears throat> this die grinder has a 1 16th uh, um, width um, fiber wheel on it. Uh, and basically, uh, what we do in order to prep the area to use this die grinder is we take a, a, a old shop towel and we wet it. Uh, we make sure we do this. And the reason why is because the fibers or the, the, uh, the uh, material that comes off of this blade along with the sway bar will embed itself into the powder coat of your swing arm and, and, and things like that. But also um, it will you know, eat into um, other painted surfaces. Uh, the reason why we don't want to do that is because uh, once this material gets embedded into the into the uh, powder coat, uh, it will then blister. It will then start to rust uh, because this is nothing but uh, uh, chrome moly steel, um, and it will uh, continue to rust until the 
until the painted surface then becomes blistered and starts to peel away. So uh, what we did is you'll see the two ends of the sway bar here. Uh, we just simply moved the sway bar out to where we had ample room. And you'll see here where we simply just cut it off. Uh, this little end here does become hot, so make sure that you hold it by this end when you take it out. And then uh, just simply take it out, remove it. Once you do that, I'm gonna pan over. You'll see how the sway bar goes through to the other side. Uh, you'll notice what we did is, is we rested on the swing arm over here to where it, it makes it a sturdy cutting surface over here. Um, so now that that's done, it's just as easy as pulling it through and then grabbing it here and then pulling it this way. Don't try to take it all the way through the other side of the chassis uh, because it, it, it's quite cumbersome and it's just easier to do it this way. So you just take it out like a fish hook here and your sway bar is out. So uh, at this point, you know, you should be about 30 minutes into this operation, maybe 40 minutes. Uh, take your time, you're in no big hurry. Uh, we just wanna make sure this is done correctly. So on to the next step. Okay, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to install the N900 sway bar now. Uh, what we're going to do in this portion of the video is we're going to segment this uh, to where I can put this into the chassis, and then we'll move over to this side and get a um, bushing installed on this side. And then in the latter part of the video, we're going to install this side here. Uh, what I do suggest is that you have, you know, the, the installation bolts for the bushings handy. Not only that, uh, you will need a mallet uh, to get these bushings in place. We make them uh, with an interference fit, uh, so they fit nice and slug and snug, and there's no um, play in the sway bar, causing it to rattle around and be loose. All right. So let's get started on to the next step. Okay, now we're gonna take the sway bar and we're just gonna simply push it in through the chassis hole here where you took the old bushing out. We will slide it all the way through. And then you'll notice that this end comes to the inside. And then what we will do is put it through that side and just let it rest for a minute. Uh, this is not gonna be its permanent location yet, so uh, just be patient. We'll show you what we have to do over here next. Okay, and next what we're going to do is we're gonna temporarily move the sway bar over to the inside and just let it rest. What we're going to do here is take this bushing. You'll notice here, if I get the reflection correct, you can see it says front and there's a flat here and that goes to the outside. This is so the, um, horizontal bump stops or lateral bump stops can rest. So uh, you'll notice that when we put these in, they are tight. We really don't want much play in the chassis here. But you just line up the holes here. And here I know you can't see that because it's hidden by the chassis here, but I'll move it on around. We're gonna put the bolts through here and here. Let me see if I can get it back down here. And there we are. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put those bolts through. And what we'll do is we'll just bump it so that way they get on through the inside there. We're not going to install the nuts on the back side yet. We'll wait for that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take and install the sway bar through this side. Okay. Now that we've done that, we're going to slide it through to where this side is outside of this window here. All right. So now I'm going to move the camera to the other side and we will replicate this over here. Okay, guys, now that we're on this side, you'll notice the sway bar here. I actually have it close to this, this um, 
um, control arm A-frame cross member here. I get it, just eyeball it from here to here, just make sure it's close. It's not in the place where it's going to be later. But what this does is this just allows us to get this other bushing installed. There's two different methods of installing these bushings. You can pre-install them and then work the bar in and back through. What I prefer to do is I will take this bushing, slip it over the other end. You'll notice that there's a little bit of a cam effect from the way the bar is mounted, but all I do is from here, I just tap it in like so. Saves a lot of time and you don't have to wrestle with getting this bar through two holes on opposite ends of the chassis. Saves you about 30 minutes. Um, it's very easy for me, so that's why I do it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put these bolts back through here. May take a little tap just to get that bolt in. So now that it's in, the next step is I'm going to install the nuts on the back side of these fasteners here. Okay, guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to put these nuts on the back side of these bolts here. Uh, what I also do is, is with all of these fasteners, I know they're nylock nuts, but just for safe keeping, what I do is I will take and apply a little bit of blue Loctite to each one prior to installation. So, you know, you're only gonna be in here once. So I put a little bit on them just to make sure they don't come loose. All right, so getting these done and out of the way, what we'll do now is we will take our wrench that has the magnet, simply put a nut in there. It won't come out, you'll see. And then what I'll do is I will take a nut driver and I use the nut driver here uh, to get them started. And the reason why is because I do not want to cross thread these fasteners. Um, so you'll be able to fill it in there. You just get them started. You'll feel them start to grab. When it does, Go ahead and tighten it down a little bit. Then we'll come back and tighten it up with our impact. So now we're gonna to move to the other side. And get this one in, you'll feel it. Okay, now that that's in there, Get it nice and snug. Okay, and those are in. Now what we're going to do is get our impact and tighten them down. Again, you'll see I use just a small impact with a 10 millimeter socket on the end. Get this up and in on the back side of the net. it down, do the same thing from the top side, all right, that's in there nice and tight, it is not going anywhere, okay, so now that we've done this side, the only thing that we need to do now is just replicate those efforts over here on these two bolts, uh, it won't take any longer than what you saw me do here, we'll go ahead and skip forward, I'm going to go ahead and do those off camera, and uh, that way it saves us time in the video. All right, now that we have both sides mounted and they're nice and tight, uh, what we're going to do now is pre-adjust this sway bar. And basically all we want to do is from this uh, bushing here to the outside edge 
we want it to be four and a half inches. Check that. We're gonna check the other side, making sure that it's equal distance because there is some variance in the chassis. So just making sure we double check. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna take these lateral bump stops here, their collars, and we're going to go ahead and install them here. What we will do is just simply slip these over. And what I do is I make it to where we can get our Allen wrench in right there just by sliding it over here. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then we're just gonna simply tighten these up. Okay, gonna get them a little snug there. And then we just use the long side of the Allen wrench like so, you can see. And that way we'll just tighten it down. No need to over tighten because the clamping force on these is really significant. It doesn't take a whole lot to make sure that they hold. Uh, so, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side, make sure it's tight. And now, we're on to go to the next step. Uh, what I will tell you is, the reason why we use these lateral bump stops and collars like we do is we use this on every performance application that uh, we make for other vehicles. Um, but what they do is they keep you from having to build a sway bar with a significant indention to be used in its stead. Uh, what this does is this bar with its torsion characteristics going this way loses a lot of, uh, of, uh, of um, load in this area. Uh, because it's not a true transition of load through this area. There is a stress riser on this side of this bump and on this side of this bump, which weakens this bar. So anyway, we'll move on to the next step. All right, now uh, the next step is, is we're gonna take and install our sway bar arms. Uh, what we do is these are anodized billet aluminum and uh, we just take and slide them over the end of the sway bar put an allen wrench in the top and tighten up the bottom one thing to make sure that you keep in mind is that this side of this arm is butted against the shoulder on the sway bar so, go ahead and tighten that up. Okay, that's nice. And then, on to the next step, is we take and install our end links to the end of the sway bar. Take our fasteners from our end links, okay? And what we do is we actually take the bolt and put it in in this fashion here. Reason being is because this shoulder is load bearing here, that smooth part of the bolt. So we put it through the end link. We rotate the, the sway bar down. Yeah, I went too far. There we are. So now that that's in, we can put our nut on the back side. And even though it's a nylock nut, I still put a little bit of lock tight in the nut there. Okay. Now that I've done that, I simply take my wrenches and
tighten them down. All right, so now that we've done this, we're gonna take and, and, and replicate this effort on the other side of the bike. We will go ahead and fast forward to the next portion and uh, keep this project moving. All right, now that we have the sway bar on the arms and the end links installed, you'll see that it's all there. Fits very nicely, very clean. And really, really makes this bike handle well. All right. Next step is we're going to clean everything up and get it ready to reassemble. All right, now we're gonna get ready to uh, get everything put back really together. pretty easy. Uh, but what we do is we're gonna go ahead and, and take the duct tape off of the, off of the um, brake line here and get it put back in place. Go ahead and take this off. Excuse my arms. We'll get that off. And what I do is I get this put back in. You'll notice that fits nicely. We will remove the shop rags. All right. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna take you to the next step is to get the radiator back and reinstalled. It's really pretty easy. If we pan up on the bottom side of the radiator, you'll see these two bosses here and here, here and here. They actually fit in these recessed cradles here and here. And it's really pretty easy. Um, doesn't take much. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll get it pulled down, pulled out and away. Remember that wire that we undid for the fan? We're gonna go ahead and plug it back into its port here. There's plenty of room to do so. Gotta get my head around here to see. Okay, that's in. Now what I do is I, the same old thing about using some leverage. As I will get my thumbs in there, get those bosses in the cradles down below. It's really pretty easy to see. And then we're going to reinstall these fasteners here. What you'll also do, we're gonna put these fasteners in right here. Make sure the hoses are back in the cradles here and on the far side. And now what I do is again, I love Loctite. I'll put a little bit of Loctite on the fastener, on this one and on this one, making sure that that washer's in place. And I get these installed here, finger tight so far, and here, finger tight so far. The reason why we do so is again, the last thing you want to do is cross thread a fastener. So we'll go ahead and get those okay. Get that aligned again. Get them started by hand. Okay, these I do not use an impact on, and the reason why is because you don't want to shatter this plastic housing here or the uh, housing that retains this clip nut back here. So I just tighten them down by hand. No need to wrench on them real hard. Usually just using a nut driver is plenty tight. All right, on to the next step. All right, guys, now we're down to the last couple of things that need to be done. Uh, and basically all that is is just uh, reinstalling the fascia. Uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, back to commenting about you need to be aware of these clips here on both sides. You'll see them there. 
and bear with me there those will fit up here remember where we put the duct tape to protect our our uh, body panel so we're going to go ahead and align the bosses that you will see Let's see if i can get a good up close picture here you'll see this boss here and there's one on the other side here right there okay those bosses have to align with these rubber grommets here on both sides so uh, with those in place what you'll do is get those bosses installed and pushed into those grommets once you'll see that you'll notice that the fascia is now sitting up on top again the reason why we have the duct tape but what this will allow you to do is allow you to flex this side in you'll hear it snap you'll flex this side in bear with me you'll hear that snap once you do that you can actually go ahead and, and remove the duct tape because that's going to stay in place get that duct tape out from underneath there and you'll notice no scratches at all still looks brand new uh, once we've done that your uh, fascia is now ready to install the lower screws i'm going to move that down here and basically it's the torx head screws that go in the bottom fascia you notice that i actually have a chin spoiler on here it ties into the engine guard that's that 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 goes all the way back to the cvt case um works really well so I'm going to go ahead and install these here. It's really pretty easy. They line up really easy. Okay. And I simply Run them down with my impact. Don't over tighten them. No need to. And now it's on. All right. That is the installation video of the N900 Riker Mod Sway Bar. I'm going to go ahead and put my hood back on. snapped in and it's ready to run so i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope it uh gave you some insight on some simpler way to do some things on this bike so uh if you have any questions please reach out and uh, we'll do our best to uh help you uh if needed take care and have a good day